Now, it has been a year since the first cases of the coronavirus were reported in Wuhan, China. Here's a look back at a mysterious virus and how it spread and that gripped the world. The invisible killer. No one could see it. No one saw it coming the way it did. It was New Year's Eve, the world on the cusp of a new year, a new decade. While fireworks ignited worldwide, even in China, sparks of concern had already been flickering for several days in the Chinese industrial hub of Wuhan. A mysterious virus was taking people's breath away, literally. Symptoms? often starting with a fever and dry cough. And then some patients were left gasping for air. Was it SARS all over again? Several doctors were getting worried. Dr. Jiang Jixian spotted abnormalities in the scans of several patients' lungs. While debate continues on where the virus originated, China says she was the first to raise the alarm on the 27th of December. A few days later, Dr. Li Wenliang warned other medics in a private chat group. Police reprimanded him for spreading rumours. Now, amid mounting concerns, China on New Year's Eve alerts the World Health Organization, pointing to a cluster in Wuhan, 27 cases of an unknown viral pneumonia. Now, several were dealers at Huanan Wet Market, which was shut down on New Year's Day. The virus was suspected to have jumped from animal to human, possibly from bats or pangolins. Now, within days, China identified the new coronavirus and released the genetic code. By then, the invisible killer had claimed its first victim. A 61-year-old man, a regular customer at Huanan Market. Now, even as the WHO infamously tweeted... There was no clear evidence of human-to-human -human transmission. The virus was already crossing borders. First, Thailand, then Japan and South Korea, all involving travellers from Wuhan. Soon, more and more border points started screening such travellers. That is, until the 23rd of January. China locked down Wuhan, a megacity of more than 11 million people, plus other parts of Hubei province. Chinese President Xi Jinping ordered an all-out response, saying life is of paramount importance. Soon after, the WHO made this declaration. The novel coronavirus outbreak is a public health emergency of international concern. That triggered the start of historic turbulence for international travel. Major hubs like the US, Singapore and Australia shut their borders to travellers from China. On the 2nd of February, the Philippines reported the first death outside China. The WHO named the runaway virus COVID-19 before making the much-dreaded announcement. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. A virus going global from 27 in China last December to a staggering 60 million plus cases and almost 1.5 million deaths a year later. It became America first with the most cases and deaths. U.S. President Donald Trump, though, downplayed the danger, likening it to a common flu. You know, a lot of people think that goes away in April with the heat. And it goes away and it goes away quickly. No question in my mind, it will go away. Worldwide, it was one grim milestone after another. Record cases, overwhelming hospitals and uh, forcing temporary ones to be built. With no vaccine and no cure, many governments took the unprecedented step to stop almost all social interactions. We want to break the chain of infection of this virus. We are basing uh, our decisions on science. These changes are vital to slow the spread of this virus to save lives. We should make a decisive move now to preempt escalating infections. The Swedish outlier approach centred on the long game. No lockdown in the hopes of herd immunity. The jury's still out as cases surge. Now, what's in agreement among most scientists is that COVID-19 is extremely contagious. The tiniest particles can travel over two metres and longer. And those with no symptoms can also spread it. And that 
underscores the risk in reopening economies. No country is immune to COVID flaring up again. And many, including China, Australia, the Philippines, all reimposed curbs after a resurgence. Europe and the U.S. are bracing for a bitter winter. All that happening amid a new season of hope for vaccines.